How's it hanging, YouTube? Peter here from Triple G Comics. Welcome back. Today, I'm joined by my very good friend, Efren from Passpoint One Comics. How are you doing, Efren? I'm doing okay, Peter. About yourself? Not so bad, mate. Not so bad. Yeah. Really excited to do this. So, me yeah. and Efren got our heads together a while ago and said that we wanted to do a, a bit of a show about Star Trek, because I think it's fair to say we're both Star Trek fans. I, I want to start off, Efren, by saying me and you both took part in one of our other friends, Ben, the Attention Seeking Geeks shows a while ago about Star Wars. Yeah. I think it made me realise that we're not on the same level. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yeah. So so I think when, you know, when we say that we're fans of Star Trek, what I mean by that is I enjoy the show, I watch the show, um, I've always liked the characters and the movies and things like that. But I don't know it inside out. I don't know in massive depth. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call myself a a massive trekker or trekkie. Would you? Not, not at all. I'm. I'm in the exact same boat as you. I mean, I, we both enjoy this series. Has been going on for over fifty decades. I get. I mean, fifty five decades. I was not fifty. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, we're just fans. You know, yeah. we really enjoy the series. Yeah, exactly. So if people are watching at home. Or on the rewind and whatnot, um, and we're getting names wrong or we pronounce things wrong. Please don't get over excited about it. It's just you know, it's just two guys talking about something they enjoy. Yep. So let's kick off. I'll just get rid of that. So Star Trek. I guess I wanted to start, Efren, with earliest memories of Star Trek. So What's your first kind of recollection of being aware of Star Trek and the Star Trek universe? Um, well, my first recollection, is, I mean, Star Trek came out in the 60s, and um, I don't remember that at all. I was too young, you know. Yeah. But uh, I remember it in the 70s. Like in yeah. the early 70s, I was watching just reruns of Star Trek, and even that was like what first brought me into this type of sci-fi genre, you know, obviously before Star Wars and, you know. Yeah. So that will have been the original series. That will have been be the original series, yes. Yeah, so for me, my my dad was a big Star Trek fan. And in England, Star Trek was kind of on at six o'clock tea time and things like that. So I remember watching some of the original series, but I can't say I can't say it stuck with us. I can't say it was like a massive part of my life. But when Next Generation came out, yeah, I, I think I was just at the right age for it. So that really grabbed my attention. And I remember it was like one of the, the biggest shows on on our channels back then um and i just loved it absolutely loved it so for me i think i fell in love with tng first and then discovered the wider universe after that are there any episodes or anything that like spring to mind straight away when you think of trek uh the very first series star trek um there was a series there was one episode when they went back in time uh like to the 1920s with joan collins all right yeah yeah that yeah. one and spock went back in time and then kirk i think and mccoy and um kirk of course fell in love with her but you know she was destined to die and she had to die and you know that scene where you know kirk was about to read no i think um mccoy was about to rescue her but they stopped him and they say you know she has to die yeah. you know it was her destiny to die because if she wouldn't die the world you know future would just change too much so that was one of my first one. And of course, the trouble with tribbles. Oh, love, <laughs> tri love a tribble. I love yeah. a tribble. <laughs> it's interesting then how those kind of... Because people sometimes think Star Trek, sci-fi in general, is a bit of fluff. It doesn't have emotional impact. But it's interesting you mention in that, that kind of darkish episode because my first memory of TNG was when Tasha Yar um, <sighs> is killed, you know? Yeah. And that stuck with me for ages, like an emotional impact, you know, this character, this big character. So I think, you know, Star Trek's really got some big emotional hits to it. Yeah. Um, okay. I've, I've popped that slide up because it represents pretty much all of the TV series. So we're starting, obviously, at the very beginning with good old James T. Kirk and the original series over to Next Generation and Picard and then Deep Space Nine. Um Deep Space Nine's not one I particularly got onto, I have to say. Um, Voyager, um, with Captain Janeway, obviously, and then we had um Enterprise with um Archer, Archer, yeah, Captain Archer. I always look at him and I can't get past Quantum Leap, 
Oh, well, we should don't talk about quantum leap, man. Love Oof, quantum leap. Maybe we should do a, a show on that series. Oh, yeah. they may yeah. come back. You know, there's really oh, Efren. Efren, I mean, yeah, we'll do a show, but I, <laughs> I, I'll tell you now, I don't know how I feel about that because for me, quantum leap ended so beautifully. Yeah, you know, with them that last line, um, you know, he never leapt, Sam never made the leap home. I just thought, yeah, oh. so anyway, yeah, so yeah. so enterprise, I enjoyed. And then we've got Discovery mm -hmm. and then Brave New World. Now, yeah. I put my hands up. I've not watched any of Discovery yet. And I don't know why. I, that it's, I don't know if it's just a timing issue as you get older or what, but I've not managed to catch that. But some tremendous series is there. I mean, a widespread an array of different captains, different storylines. Are there any in particular? Well, let's put it this way, friend. Which is your trek? So um, my trick, I mean, as much as I like the first one, um, but, you know, like I said, I was too young to watch the original series. Um, my trick is uh, TNG. You know, when it first came out, I was going, God, I don't know if this is going to be any good, you know, but it was just, it was a really great series, yeah. you know, and I hate it when it, when they left and I loved it when they made movies. And, yeah. uh, but Deep Space Nine, there was this one episode and it had to do with Tribbles. I don't know if you've ever seen it. They went back in time. <laughs> Yeah. And I, wow, that was so seamless, you know, yeah. when they did that one show. I went, Boy, this is excellent. This, this is crazy. I loved it. You know? yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm with you, Efren. I think Next Generation for me, probably because that's what I grew up with. And I just adore Patrick Stewart. Yeah. That for me is always going to be the, the the Star Trek that that's closest to my heart. Deep Space Nine. Um, I don't know, it, it didn't grab us, but there were some tremendous battles and things with the Dominion yep. War and all that kind of stuff and really fleshed out the, the Cardassians, which we'll talk about in a bit. Yeah. Um, Voyager, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember much about Voyager. I know I watched it, but I can't remember a great deal. That's when we met the character, Seven of Nine. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I remember that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Enterprise, I remember. I enjoyed watching Enterprise a lot. Yeah. Um, but some tremendous series, really. Yeah. And I, and I think that's probably the thing that stands out for me with Star Trek is there's such such an array of flavor for everybody. Out of all of them, which is your favorite captain? Then uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And the original actor from Star Trek with uh, Captain Pike. Yeah, yeah. I felt so bad how he ended up, you know, like in a wheelchair, like basically, you know, couldn't yeah. move, you know, and he went to that planet and, you know, in that planet, you know, the way his life was normal in his head, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's when I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that start to the next Star Trek show with Captain Pike. And it's going to be Spock on there too. I think Uhura is going to be on there too. All right. Yeah. Because the, the very first episode of Star Trek wasn't Kirk, obviously, was it? It was Captain no. Pike. Yes. Um, and then, like you say, he ends up in that chair, and we'll get the episode further down the line, I think, yeah. of that. Tremendous. Some superb, I think, some superb um, shows there, but also looking at that array of actors, some tremendous performances as well, iconic performances, you know? Um, yeah, marvellous. Ships and technology. Now, this is, for me, is a big part of Star Trek. I love the future tech. I love the fact that a lot of the technology that was shown in Star Trek is kind of materialized into the real world. So this is where they got the idea of like some of the mobile phone technology and, you know, 3D printers and build. Yeah. Um, the oh, phones. Yeah, phones. Phone. Stephen, Stephen Jobs um, yeah. credited Star Trek for some of the Apple stuff they've done. I've always liked, for me, I've always liked the cleanness of the ships and the... Um, they just look sexy. They look, you know, they look nice. What do you think of the the Starfleet ships? Oh, I love them. I mean, the first one looks so campy now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it really does, doesn't it? Yeah. I was like, what the heck is that, man? Uh, but the way they're just shaped for space, you know, it looks like the aerodynamics, you know, and I love them. You know, they're yeah. really excellent. Yeah, I think, um, and this is often the comparison to, to Star Trek and Star Wars, I guess. Um these are much bigger in scale than some yeah. of the Star Trek, Star Wars ships. Um, but they're just beautiful looking pieces of, of machinery. And then we've got the the kind of the, the alien races ships. And again, we've got a massive different variation and array 
the them from your Klingon vessels to your um I can't remember what they're called, those little point you onto the Thalian. They're the ones that like spread the web. Oh yeah, Thalian yeah, I forgot what they were called, yeah. And then of course my favorite at the back there, the, the good old the Borg. Borg. Yeah, I love the Borg. Any of those ships kind of stand out to you? I think I like the Klingon ships, and I think what made it so what made me like them more was just the, the music every time they came out, you know, that music for the Klingon ships. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, it's a bird of praise, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, I think those Klingon ships were my favorite. That kind of noise when it materializes. Yes. Think, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the thing. What Again, one of the things with Star Trek for me is some of the sounds just, I mean, I can't walk past some, you know, manual, sorry, electronic doors without doing the whole, you know, all that kind of jazz, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I love it. So yeah, some tremendous looking ships. And then baddies. You know, we've got an array of different races, different creatures, different um, nemesis. I guess you would say for for um, the Trek characters. Which spring to mind when you're thinking of baddies in Star Trek? Um, specifically, I forgot the name of this actor, but his eyes in the Klingon. Oh yeah, <laughs> his eyes were just like piercing. I was like, man, just looking at his eyes was like, what the heck is going on with this guy? You know. But besides that, I, just the Borg and Locutus. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. everybody's going to be assimilated, and when they took Picard, that, I think that's like my favorite episode of all time: the Borg and Star Trek: The Next Generation. When yeah. Locutus, when they took him, I was like, dang. And then that, that was a season cliffhanger too. I remember. Uh -huh. I yeah. was like, what the heck? You know? Yeah. And then and back then, again, because we are quite old, different. Back then, yeah. you didn't have the internet and thing for spoilers, did you? No. So you were literally waiting yeah. six months to a year for the next episode to come out. And it, it literally ended with him turning, didn't it? Yes. And you saw, oh, it was tremendous. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Excellent. I, I can't not mention Q, one of my favorites. I think yeah. he's a, Jonathan Delance, superb actor. And I just love the playful. Um, nastiness of him, shall we say? He's a yeah. bit like to me. He's he's a bit like um, oh, Superman's Mister Missilipplex or whatever you call him. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Do you know that kind of playful imp, yeah. omnipotent imp who just pops yeah. by? We've obviously got Khan there, tremendous character, um, and then the the Cardassian guy there. I think he's called. Golda Sack or something? Yeah, I remember this character. It was, sometimes he'd be a good guy. He'd be like in between good and bad. Yeah. I remember that. You know, it was a great, great characterization of this character. You know? I think they did those characters, the Cardassians particularly, um, really well in terms of political evilness. So they yeah. weren't kind of shooting and gunning you down, but they were kind of working in the background to overthrow you. And there's an amazing, again, a Next Generation episode. Um, where Picard gets kidnapped by them and he's being tortured. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, they're trying to get him to see, I think it's, is it four lights or something? They're trying to get him see, to say there are four lights when oh, there's only right. three. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And then you've got the Gorn there, <laughs> the classic Gorn. Look at the costume work there, man. Tremendous. 1960s um, campiness. <laughs> and then I've popped um, Spock on there, Mirrorverse Spock. Yeah. Because I guess I kind of wanted to mention that we're all getting very excited these days about the multiverse and about, you know, all the stuff that's happening with Marvel and what mm. if about different variations. Star Trek did this back in the 50s. You know, the yeah. original series had the mirror universe where yeah. you had the, the flip image of all of the Star Trek characters, evil versions of them. Um, I don't know if that was the first time it was done or if they led the way with that. But, you know, again, yeah. some tremendous stories. And I think they've continued that out throughout a number of series, haven't they? There was certainly a Deep Space Nine episode where they kind of went in the mirror verse. Um, Discovery, the new one, uh, they have that too. Right, yeah. Yep. They've done that but, too. Tr again, tremendous, tremendous um, storylines, really. Um, Movies. So, first off, Efren, test you here. Have you seen all of the movies? Um, let me see. First contact. I don't think I, I've seen them all except for uh, Star Trek Insurrection. You're not missing anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, it's really interesting, the Star Trek movies in terms of quality that 
we seem to be really hit and miss. You have a really, really good one. I'm looking at Wrath of Khan yeah. there, or First Con, um, yeah, First Contact. Um, and then they have some really ropey ones. Star Trek One was dire. I mean, it was a real miss. Um, and Undiscovered Country's not not the best either. Which of those do you jump to? Which is your favourite? Do you think? Ah, uh, let me see here. Let me. I I did like um, the reboot Star yeah. Trek. You know, when I cut by about 10 years ago, yeah, I was like, wow, this is so cool. You know, they have these characters, and I thought they were they were um the original characters from Star Trek, but they weren't, they're from a different earth, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. So, but I still yeah. loved the first one, and then uh Star Trek four when they were in San Francisco saving the whales. Yeah, yeah. I like that one, and uh, I like generations too, where it linked Kirk with uh, Picard. So it's interesting you saying that because I, I love generations because of that link. And yeah. again, we're all getting very excited at the moment because of spoilers, um, Spider-Man and the crossovers. of Again, Star Trek did it years ago. Yeah. You know, bringing Kirk in to interact with Picard. Fabulous, you know. And it is actually a very, again, spoilers for anyone that's not seen it. The death scene at the end is quite an emotional scene. It's got a bit of impact, you know. You know, um, I read a book after Generations and they brought um, Kirk back. Efren, Efren, honestly, we're on the same level. That will be Star Trek The Return. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've read it. <laughs> yeah. Um, they shouldn't have. They should have just left it as, yeah. as it is a proper hero's death. Yeah. Um, for me, I love Wrath of Khan. I think that's one of my favourite films of all time. Um, it's not a masterpiece. There are some dodgy bits. Um, I love First Contact. Oh, I think yes. that is absolutely amazing film. Yep. And I enjoy the, the new versions, like you say. I didn't mind what they did with um, Khan in Into Darkness. Wasn't so fond of the last one, Star Trek Beyond, yeah. where they used rock music to beat the baddies or something. I thought, oh, where are we going with this? Um, but yeah, some, some great films, and a lot of them as well. I, th I think sometimes people don't realise Star Trek's been chugging away for a long, long time, hasn't it? Yeah, and as bad as the first very first Star Trek movie was bad you know i still liked it because it was the first one <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah wow they're back <laughs> yeah um so one of the things that's often thrown at star trek is that it's it's boring so one of my good friends will tell us that it's you know it's it's not got a lot of action and things like that and it's a bit dull but i don't think that that's true i i, I really do i i like the 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 ethos that gene roddenberry put into star trek in that you know when you start shooting and fighting that's a failure you, yeah you do everything you can to not get to that point i think that's a good message for the world at the moment sure um but so i enjoy that that diplomacy there's for me there was nothing more exciting and or invigorating than picard kind of on the bridge outsmarting someone but that said, when Star Trek does do action, it does it very well in my views. And there have been some absolutely phenomenal space battles. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, the, the first, like you mentioned earlier, Locutus, the battle um, where all the ships are attacking the Borg cubes and things. And yeah. I think when it, when it does it well, it's tremendous. I mean, have you got any thoughts about the space battles and things? Um, I really... Like I said, the Borg one and TNG was excellent when all the starships were attacking the Borg and just when they fight off against Cleons every now and then. Yeah. And uh, there was this one particular scene. It wasn't a fight scene, but it was Star Trek. It was like after the fight scene and they had lost control of the Enterprise and it crashed down onto a planet. Yeah, Generations. That Was that Generations? Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, this looks so real. <laughs> I was like, yeah. dang, you know, I really enjoyed that, one, that scene. Going back really quick to uh, Gene Roddenberry, I think his vision of humanity, that's what Star Trek obviously is based on. And he wanted, and there was this quote recently by Gene Roddenberry, because everything that's going on in the world that, you know, peace is, you know, not fighting is just wrong. You know, yeah. there's, there's a way through it, through talking, you know, it was just his vision. I think I wish the world was like that. You, you see, know? this is the thing, me and you, Efren, I'm sure we're, we're brothers. Um, <laughs> some of my colleagues and friends will mock me for my life view. But my life view is very much focused or based on Star Trek's kind of philosophy, which is yeah. uh, 
what we should be aiming for is is everybody working in unison and getting on the federation of planets is what we want you know yeah that that kind of a thing um which is i think why i like star trek so much because it presents as we're looking at a slide of war but it presents an optimistic view of the future that humanity does survive and does better itself you know yeah not to get political but i wish this world we were, we're all humans yeah i mean we've got you know why can't we just all live in peace yeah absolutely know? but anyway so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah some some tremendous battles in star yeah. trek some great special effects looking back people will criticize the special effects but you know 50 years ago that that original series came out of course some of those special effects are going to look old oh yeah uh, but yeah i think it's phenomenal we also get some great physical action as well not just starships and things i, I would encourage anybody to go back and watch first contact because that for me oh, when yeah. the borg are coming on the starship it's just phenomenal you know yeah. so we get a lot of good action and good kind of um land battles i guess and then Nobody does it better than Kirk, but we'll get, you know, some <laughs> superb fisticuffs, don't we? Yeah. Um, particularly, like I say, with Kirk. So, yeah, I think I think to say Star Trek doesn't have action is doing it a bit of a disservice. Um, and I think just before we move on, Efren, we've touched, we're getting a little bit political here, but but one of the other things to say about Star Trek is it's it's always presented that multicultural view. Yeah. So, you know, it's always promoted everybody just works alongside each other and gets on with each other. There's a brilliant episode, and I've mentioned it before, I think. Um, I can't remember what the episode's called from the original series where there's a race where they're all halved and oh, yeah. half of the planet's right hand is black yeah, and half of the planet's left hand is black. And they've been at war for years and it gets to the point where I think Kirk's saying to them, what's the fighting about? And they're saying, well, it's because he's different. And they just can't see past the difference in sight. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there's some tremendous moral lessons to be learned. The future. Oh, I guess kind of why we, we decided to do this show, really, yeah. is that we are both exceptionally excited about what Star Trek's got coming up. So do you want to talk with through some of these? Which ones have got you most excited? Well, um, I think for me, it's the middle one, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Going back to Captain Pike and Spock, and Uhura, I think the before it was was this is the Enterprise, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the Enterprise it's been such a long time, but it's Captain Pike's, you know. And I think in this series, he knows his future, what's going to happen to him. Oh, Plus, right. Because uh, he came out in Discovery, and he had a glimpse of what his future holds, and he knows what's going to happen to him. So um, I'm not sure if they're going to incorporate that into the series, but. I have strange new roles, but it looks like he's right in the middle of this picture. It looks like he's on a horseback. Yeah, yeah. I love so I thought, that. Wow, it's going to be maybe cowboy style, that type, you know. So I'm really looking forward to that one as much as, I, especially about Picard, too. I'll let you talk about Picard. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about strange new worlds because okay. I guess it depends what universe it's set in. Because in the, the yeah. Star Trek movies, which is the next image of the, the rebranded movies, do, did we know what happened to Pike in that universe? I don't know if we did or not. Because it's mm -hmm. different to ours, isn't it? Well, if you're talking about the uh, the most recent Star Trek movies, um, Pike, I think he died. Was he, that um... Bruce Greenwood? I think he ah, right. he was in a he he got um, paralyzed too, but then he was able to walk again. But in the last Star Trek movie, he died. Ah, right. Okay. So yeah. So strange new roles. Is this is it based on the original Star Trek show? I honestly don't know. Yeah, me I don't neither. Know. Hmm. It's going to be exciting to see. Yeah. It. And then over here, we've got Picard coming out tomorrow night. So I'm really excited about this. I enjoyed the first season. I'm not, I'm not going to say it was a masterpiece. I, um, I loved seeing Patrick Stewart. He does look like he's aged, obviously, because yeah. he has. Um, and I do think they tried, to, they tried to sexy it up a little bit. It was a bit Star Wars at times. Mm -hmm. Um for me, it really got better near those last few episodes where we started to see Riker back and yeah. um, the starships, I guess, Starfleet and all that kind of jazz. Um, but I did enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to seeing this next season. And obviously, Jonathan Delance is in it as Q. Whoopi Goldberg's back as, oh, as yes. Um I just think it's going to be phenomenal. So I'm I really think, looking forward to that. 
in Picard, there's one scene where, well, not one scene, but one character died, Hugh. Yeah, and yeah. Went, Dang it. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, you know? So you follow these characters throughout the years. Oh, wow, Hugh's back. And yeah. you know, everybody doesn't know Hugh. He was a Borg. Uh, mm -hmm. He was assimilated, but then, you know, he, he, they got him out of there. But uh, when he passed away, I went, dang it, man. I go, ah. yeah. you know. Yeah, no, again, you know, a real, real emotional hits really in that show, wasn't it? So lots to be excited about, I think, for Star Trek fans or people who enjoy sci-fi. I just hope people give it a chance. I hope people go and watch the new Star Trek film or try Strange New Worlds yeah. um, because it's good TV and it's good sci-fi. And I will go back and watch Discovery. I must try and catch up on that. I think it's it's a few seasons in now, isn't it? It's like into season three or four already. Yeah. You know, the last I guess season... Sorry, I guess oh. one of the only other things we haven't mentioned, and again, it's something I haven't watched, but I think you have, is the the recent animated cartoon. Oh. Is it Lower Decks? Or something? Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, you, you haven't seen it yet? No, no. Um, the actor uh, William Frakes, he comes out in a couple of episodes. You know, right. Frakes, Riker, and it's just yeah. basically, you know, Lower Decks. You know, the Upper Decks is where all the excitement happens, and there's always somebody's got to take care of the ship and do the grunge work, so to speak. Yeah. It's just hilarious. I mean, it's one of my favorite animated. I go, wow, this is really good. You know, I like the way that it just makes it not so serious. Yeah. Obviously, you know. What, oh, what, I'm, what I'm looking forward think. to catching up on that, Efren. I will give that a watch. Okie dokie, ladies and gents. So that's our um, that's our little quick canter through Star Trek. We could have talked for hours, I think. Efren. Yeah. Um, but we'll try to keep this a little bit shorter just to give people a bit of a flavour of Star Trek and, and what we like about it. Really interested for people, <laughs> really interested for people in the comments below uh, to stick what they think about Star Trek. Tell us what your favourite series are, who your favourite captain is and all that kind of stuff. If you like this kind of stuff, we'll do it in the future. I think Efren will, will definitely be doing a review of Picard. Yeah? Yes. And perhaps some of the other shows as well. So yeah. perhaps in the future we'll, we'll be doing a bit more Star Trek content on both of our channels. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us, Efren. Been a really interesting chat. Um, and we'll end on a salute, should we? As you've just done. Yeah. <laughs> Live long and prosper, Efren. Live long and prosper, everyone. <laughs> Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>